had never heard of the Falkland Islands in 1982 when war broke out. I was only 12, but I wanted to know why we still had a colony and why we were fighting over it. When I first came to Argentina three years ago to improve my tango, I took the opportunity to answer my childhood questions and understand the Argentinian point of view. I learned more about why we went to war on a free walking tour in Buenos Aires when I first arrived. In Argentina, the installation of this last dictator, according to this doctrine, signified specifically that eh, se eh, instalara el terrorismo de Estado. Por terrorismo de Estado se entiende que el Estado ataca a sus propios civiles por medios de canales institucionales, pero clandestinamente. Esto quiere decir que eh, el Estado tenía todo el poder para poder aniquilar a quienes consideraba con el nombre de comunistas, subversivos y demás. Esto significó en la Argentina que la Argentina eh, secuestró, desapareció, torturó y asesinó a eh, miles de personas. Y entonces, en medio de este contexto en el cual había una creciente denuncia de, los de la violación de derechos humanos y una creciente crisis económica, es que el gobierno militar decide eh, esta, lo que se denominó la recuperación de las Malvinas. Y salió por todos lados esta imagen, por todos los medios argentinos, esta imagen en la cual se ven a los soldados rendirse en las Islas Malvinas. Esto significó que ese mismo día hubo un... Eh, una, eh, una aglomeración de gente en la Plaza de Mayo festejando que las Islas Malvinas eran argentinas, ¿sí? Entonces, eh, por un momento parecía que el gobierno militar tenía todo este apoyo de la gente festejando por un reclamo que era un reclamo que se, que se tenía desde muchísimo tiempo. Que después, Reino Unido, Margaret Thatcher era la primera ministra, decide responder con hostilidades. Britain sent 127 ships, 42 warplanes and 35,000 soldiers to safeguard a colony over 8,000 miles away with a population of only 1,820 people. Two hundred and fifty-five British soldiers and three Falkland Islanders lost their lives in the conflict. Six hundred and forty-nine Argentinian lives were lost. Many as young as eighteen, who'd never even held a rifle, and many died from hypothermia or starvation. The war turned the tide on a military dictator responsible for ordering the deaths of 30,000 of his own people and ultimately led to the re-establishment of democracy in Argentina. Gualtieri had used Las Malvinas to gain popularity, but he had only exploited what was already implanted in the minds of Argentinians. Everywhere you go in Argentina, there are references to Las Malvinas being Argentinian. I'm in Tierra del Fuego National Park, at the end of the road, at the end of the world, and look. Every city I went to had a memorial honouring those who lost their lives during the conflict. Uh, Mario is staying in my hostel and he's given me a lesson to Cordoba at the moment and we've got 
start chatting, and it turns out he's a history teacher. Se, se concientiza al chico, al niño, al niño de, vamos a decir, de, de nueve años, ocho años, diez años, se lo concientiza diciendo, bueno, las Malvinas son argentinas por esto, por esto y por esto. Una de las cosas es que aparece en el mapa nuestro. En más, pertenecen a una provincia nuestra. Cuando un niña, un niña muy joven, sí. crea un dibujo de un mapa, tiene poder en su cabeza, ¿sí? Y en algunos casos también se habla de la cuestión histórica. Porque si la descubrieron los españoles, a las Malvinas, ¿verdad? La descubrieron los españoles. Los españoles fueron nuestros descubridores, nuestro idioma, ¿sí? Lo debemos los españoles. Y si nosotros nos independizamos de España, pues bien, eh, su posesión, que era la Argentina más... O sea, lo que es la actual Argentina en ese momento, bueno, por supuesto que las islas también pertenecen a, a Argentina. Spain didn't discover Argentina, it conquered it. And the first definite sightings of Las Malvinas are credited to a Dutch explorer, not to Spain. I've come to Ushuaia, which is the most southerly city in Argentina. It calls itself the capital of Las Malvinas. There is a plaza and a monument dedicated to Las Malvinas. There are army barracks, as well as the naval base where the Belgrano sailed from, a ship the British attacked when it was outside of the exclusion zone. There is also a museum called Pensar, which means think. It's a rainy day, which is a perfect day to go to a museum. Um, I'm feeling a little bit scared because I have a responsibility. I feel like I've got quite a weight on my shoulders and I'm kind of regretting the whole idea of making a film about Las Malvinas. It's not a war museum, it's really all about the history. When you walk in here, there's all the history of Las Malvinas. And then you come into the other room and there's a timeline where you can read all the important dates. I've been given this leaflet in English um, about why Malvinas should be Argentinas. The leaflet contained strong language, illegitimate occupation by a foreign nation. It started on January the 3rd, 1833, when the United Kingdom occupied the islands illegally, breaking up the integrity of the Argentine territory. In 1833, Argentina had not yet conquered Patagonia nor Tierra del Fuego, so Las Malvinas was geographically nowhere near Argentina at that point. The timeline begins in 1493 with something called the Papal Bull. Um, and that's where Spain declared that all islands west and south of the Azores and Cape Verde um, now belong to Spain. Las Malvinas had not yet been discovered, so this aptly named Papal Bull claimed ownership of something that didn't even exist yet. In 1764, the French were the first to arrive and settle in the east, and they called it Malvinas, which is where Las Malvinas comes from. The British, they didn't know about the settlement um, in the east of the French. They were the first to settle in the west. And then in 1770, when the Spanish arrived, they were rather surprised to discover that their islands were already inhabited. So they bought the French um, colony, 
Um, but Britain refused to sell their claim and um, war was threatened, so Britain temporarily withdrew. In 1771, the British returned, but then in 1774, they left again because they needed their resources for the American War of Independence. In 1816, when Argentina gained its independence from Spain, the islands were empty, and so they sent people down to form settlement. Um, but it was when Argentina appointed a civil and military commander that Britain then stepped in, returned, and wanted to claim the islands. So it's really easy to go down that rabbit hole of history, trying to figure out who has the most right to the claim on the islands. But reading that makes me take a British side. So it's, it has a negative effect on me. But I, I think it's more for Argentinians. I think the idea is to make Argentinians think. But it doesn't make them think. That is actually a form of indoctrination. It makes them want Las Malvinas. It makes them want sovereignty. Making sense of the history, I could see that Argentina did have a claim. To the settlement in the east, injustice was done when Britain removed the newly independent Argentina from this land in the east that Britain never had a claim to. But my question as a child was why do we still have a colony there? And the answer lies in um, a date which isn't included in this timeline and that's 1968. In 1968, Britain actually drew up a secret agreement to give the islands to Argentina. But the islanders, um, settlers who've been there nearly 200 years, formed a powerful lobby against this. And so it, it didn't get through Parliament. So this timeline ends in 2012, but in 2013 there was a referendum um, and the inhabitants were asked whether they wanted to remain British and they voted yes, but that's obviously a foregone conclusion, isn't it? For us, the inhabitants uh, born in the, in the Malvinas, born in the, in the island, are Argentinians too. We need to resolve the, 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 the principal issue, that's it, the international dispute. And uh, for that, uh, we need a dialogue uh, with the UK and um, we need uh, the rest of the international community um, support this uh, table of negotiations because it's a long time uh, problem and we need to uh, resolve that in peace, dialogue and justice. You know, really the sticking point is the islanders, they don't want to be governed by Argentina. I mean, what would they have pesos? And um, I mean, the Argentinians don't even want pesos. It's worthless. They, the Argentinians exchange them all for dollars. So I think there's a lot of issues that have not really been thought through. Every year, the United Nations Special Committee on Decolonization calls on Argentina and the United Kingdom to resume negotiations. The United Kingdom has so far refused. An artist friend, Henrik Dahl, was raising funds to finish a book. World domination. Divvying up the world. Bloody borders. <laughs> Warmongers, I tell you. Southern hemisphere. A little bit more exploitation. We could think of it as exploration. And it's a complete swindle. Daylight robbery is another word for it. Henrik was making earrings from an old tin globe, so I commissioned him to make some of Las Malvinas to give to a tango friend, an international relations student, as a gesture of apology. After four months of waiting, they finally arrived in the post. to give you this as a 
gesture of apology, of profound apology. I mean that sincerely from my heart. Um, I believe it was wrong for Britain to uh, kick off Argentina from Las Malvinas in 1833. And this, it's, it's a small gesture, but it comes with a lot, a lot of heartfelt sincerity. I would like you to receive this. This is for you. Because Las Malvinas is such a sensitive subject, my friend didn't want to be filmed. Um, I've invited around this uh, milonguero, a milonguero is somebody who goes to milongas. I've invited around someone who's in the military, he's a captain called Julio, um, and I know him from dancing at milongas. No hay resentimiento entre el soldado argentino y el soldado inglés. No debe haber este, ese resentimiento que queda después. En el momento puede ser, porque uno quiere ganar, sí. pero ve al otro como enemigo, pero después ya se termina ese resentimiento, porque la vida continúa. So the idea is to have a tango between Argentina and Britain. I'm standing here with my back to Argentina, looking, um, what was the word, indignant. That's it, indignant, like we're not, not coming up with a solution. Argentina's standing over here looking at Las Malvinas, looking at the islands and he's been waiting there nearly 200 years to solve this problem. So I finally turn around, I'm ready to dance, and I turn around and I step forward. I'm ready, ready, let's, let's find a solution. And so then uh, Julio steps forward. He leads, so Argentina leads the dance. And, and tango, well, Argentinian tango is improvised, so we actually haven't come up with um, a routine or anything. We're just, you know, doing it in the moment because that's, that's actually what real Argentinian tango is supposed to be.